Good evening. Please be seated. And for those of you who are out there, please feel free to take your masks off. We are so glad you are here. Welcome to this evening's baccalaureate service. Two classes are partnering for this special service. Graduates of the class of 2020 and almost graduates of the class of 2021. And you who are here can give yourselves a hand. And we will too. So baccalaureate is a time-honored tradition that started in Britain as members of the graduating classes of Oxford and Cambridge universities presented individual speeches in Latin on the eve of their graduation. But you don't have to do that. You just come to celebrate with all of us tonight. The roots of this ceremony come from the Christian tradition, but we have expanded it at Hood College to recognize and celebrate the rich diversity of spiritual traditions presented by our graduating seniors. So tonight, we invite those of you who are here in person and those of you who are listening virtually to listen to members of your class and also our esteemed speaker, Professor Teresa Bean, reflect on learning and growing in wisdom. So each of you tonight come to this ceremony with a list of individual accomplishments, academic and extracurricular, that you have achieved during your time at Hood. And tomorrow, those will be recognized as you walk across this stage to receive your diplomas. But each of you stands on the shoulders of someone who has come before you, somebody who's helped you get to this point. Family, friends, mentors, important people who deserve our thanks. And each year I ask all of us who are gathered here to take a moment to remember the names of those special people, particularly those who aren't with us, those who have passed. And in the midst of a global pandemic, many more of us have lost loved ones. And so I want to invite you to a moment of silence to give thanks for your loved ones, for those who have helped you get to this day, who are no longer here. So will you join me in that spirit of remembrance? Amen. So it is our opportunity to begin this commencement weekend. This is the kickoff for your celebration. And so I would like to invite those of you who are able to stand and join with me, including those of us who are up here, who are welcome to stand. Those of you who are out there, to stand as well. And share with me the reflection and celebration that are printed in your bulletin. Tonight we gather to honor and celebrate our years at Hood College in the gift of education. We give thanks for the source of wisdom who inspires our learning. We come to express appreciation for family and friends without whose support this celebration would not be possible. We give thanks to the spirit of compassion and for everyone who has taught us to love and to live with integrity. And we come with thanks for the simple and profound gift of life. We give thanks to the Creator for everything that nourishes, supports, and challenges us. In the beloved tradition of scholarship and service at Hood College, we now offer our best to the world. Corde et mente et manu. We bring caring hearts, open minds, and willing hands in service to all. Amen. Please be seated. And it is my honor now to introduce to you, a woman who doesn't need any introduction, the president of Hood College, Dr. Andrea Chapdelaine. Good evening. How we doing? Hi to all who are here and those who are with us in spirit through the magic of technology. So I'm glad to see most of you are in shade. Those of you who are not, you can move over if you want. <laughs> I think we're going to have plenty of hot moments tomorrow. 
Welcome to our baccalaureate service. Welcome to all who are gathered here and those joining us virtually. Tonight, on the eve of graduation, we gather together filled with joy, pride, and yes, a little sadness. As an institution founded by the United Church of Christ, a baccalaureate service has been an important part of commencement exercises at Hood since its founding 128 years ago. I personally am grateful that Hood has maintained this tradition, although, as Rep. Beth just said, its form and content have evolved to reflect the changes in our student body over time. I know you know I'm pretty old, but I actually do remember my own baccalaureate ceremony. I remember standing in a circle with my classmates during the candle ceremony. I remember the light on my friends' faces, the pride in my parents' eyes, and the warm hugs of my faculty mentors. I even remember the chaplain, but to tell the truth, I don't remember the president at all, which tells me I should be brief. In my field of psychology, and some of you are out there, my co-psychology majors, there is a phenomenon known as flashbulb memory. It means that events laden with strong emotion can be highly memorable if we focus our attention and try to remember each detail. In today's world, we call this mindfulness. So I invite all of us to take a deep breath, close our eyes, and allow the peace of our beautiful setting to embrace us, quiet our thoughts, slow our breathing, and just enjoy the moment. Now, open your eyes and activate your senses so you are fully present. Look at those around you. Listen deeply to what is being spoken tonight and enjoy the campus. If you do so, you will have a rich, lasting memory to always cherish. I have done this and it works. Try to take time tomorrow to do the same. Take a break from the selfies, the texting, and just be present. As you go forward from Hood, each year around this time, you know, when, the fa when you get the notice of the memory, I was going to say Facebook, but you guys don't do Facebook anymore. Take a moment to reactivate and recall those memories. Don't let them fade. They will be the best keepsakes of this weekend. Now, the primary purpose for a baccalaureate ceremony is to give thanks. As you reflect on how you arrived here today, hours from commencement, think about what has made it possible. It is due to the gifts you have received from your maker, be that a god, goddess, or the forces of nature, depending on your own spiritual beliefs. These include your intelligence, motivation, talents, emotional fortitude, and perseverance. For all of these aptitudes that have enabled you to achieve, be thankful. Just as important to your success are the many hands that have shaped you, guided you, supported you. Be thankful for the joy and meaning they have given to your journey thus far and for the reassuring knowledge that they will be with you as you journey from hood. For all your loved ones, be thankful. Now, it is easy to be thankful for the good things in our lives, but I encourage you to give thanks for the bad as well. Give thanks for your own limitations and failings. Be grateful to those who have stood in your way led you off your path, disappointed you, and even hurt you. Whether it be the struggle to learn organic chem, memorize historical facts, or write a coherent essay, or the employer who would not give you a chance, the award you worked so hard for but did not receive, the physical illness or personal tragedy that almost present, prevented you from being here today or even the naysayers who are quick to cut you down, discourage you from reaching high, or do not provide the kind word or helping hand when it was most needed. And of course for you, classes of 20 and 21, that includes the pandemic. You have known an obstacle like no other, and yet, still, you are here. And although it may be hard to do so, try to find that lemonade and COVID lemons and be thankful for the hard learned but incredibly valuable lessons of the pandemic. Those bad things 
obstacles, crisis, disappoint, disappointments, your own missteps, and COVID-19 strengthened you and made you resilient. They will make the next hill easier to climb. So although it can be hard, be thankful for those rocks in your path and forgive those who put them there, especially when the person who put them there was you. Do not let them become stones you carry with you, weighing down your heart. Instead, be thankful, for a grateful heart is indeed a joyful heart. And graduates, happiness is what I want most for each and every one of you, especially of you who have recently had some of that joy stolen away. In the spirit of my remarks, let me close by expressing my thanks to each and every one of you. My interactions with you bring me joy. They bring meaning to my work. You are my Hood family. Thank you for the blessings you are to me. Pres Chap is so short, so there's a little thing right here, so I have to step up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so hello and welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for being here with us today, even though it's quite hot. I promise I'll keep this introduction very brief, but my name is Lily Bean, and I'm the president of the class of 2021. I'm so grateful that we could all gather here and respect the time-honored tradition that is baccalaureate. Unfortunately, Christian Hoke, the president of the class of 2020, was unable to attend today's ceremony, but I also want to welcome the members of the class of 2020. I'm so thankful that we were all able to come back and celebrate together. Both classes share a loss of time spent in college because of COVID-19, but we've come back more resilient than ever and go into the future more appreciative of this time that we spend and the memories that we share. Thank you. Tonight's celebration recognizes the role that religious and spiritual traditions play in passing on wisdom for life. Three of the traditions that are shared by the class of 2020 and 2021 are reflected in the readings that we have from sacred texts. And the first tonight is Judaism, and it will be shared virtually with a recording by Dr. Amy Gottfried, professor of English. Hello, and congratulations to all of you. The prophet Micah gave a vision of life's purpose to his community when he said, the Holy One has already made it plain how to live and what to do, what God is looking for in men and women. It's quite simple. Do what is fair and just to your neighbor. Be compassionate and loyal in your love and don't take yourself too seriously. Take God seriously. And Dr. Albert Schweitzer addressed some of our biggest questions when he wrote, in religion, we try to find answers to the elementary questions that confront each of us every morning. What meaning and what value is to be ascribed to our life? What am I to this world? What is my purpose in it? What may I hope for in this world? I do not want to consider my existence merely as one that rises and perishes among the multitude of beings that constitute the universe, but as a life that has value. Hello and assalamu alaikum everyone. Assalamu alaikum is another way of saying hello or peace be upon you in Islam. My name is Ikra Rafiq and I'm very much honored and thankful for this opportunity to be standing here and representing Islam. We all need guidance in our journey to pursue our goals. My guidance was the readings from the Quran as well as sayings from 
Muslim Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Today, I will be sharing two hadiths, which is a collection of traditions containing sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, with which accounts of his daily practice constitutes the major source of guidance for Muslims apart from the Quran. The reason why I want to share and read these two hadiths in particular is because as a Muslim, these hadiths have guided my way into becoming a better student and a better individual. The first hadith I want to share reads as follows. Knowledge from which no benefit is derived is like a treasure out of which nothing is spent in the cause of God. The hadith has been an integral part of my journey as a student in times of stress and sorrow. The hadith has guided me through tough times and has always instilled hope and inspiration for my future. However, what I did have to realize in this particular hadith was that it was not commanding me to go out of my way to find a situation in which I will be able to use algebra or similar concepts that I learned in school. Rather, it is telling me that I should not hesitate to put that knowledge to use should the opportunity to do so ever arise. However, as the graduation came closer, I started to reflect on my actions, what I did wrong, and what I could have done better. As a Muslim, I'm obligated to question myself as to what actions are most excellent. And this hadith, which reads as follows, to gladden the heart of a human being, to feed the hungry, to help the afflicted, to lighten the sorrow of sorrowful, to remove the wrongs of the injured, that person is the most beloved of God who does most goods to God's creature. In this hadith, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, calls for having justice and compassion towards other people. Many of you are not aware of hadiths However, what I do want each and every one of you to take from my reading is to continue to promote nonviolence, peace, and mercy. The world really needs positivity and people who can instill and promote hope and justice for our future generations. Thank you, everyone. I hope you inspire many generations to come. Thank you. My fellow graduates, what a journey of uncertainty we have been on. From our first days in college, where we were not sure if we would make friends, or if we would ever figure out what we were going to do with the rest of our lives, to last year, where we were struck with fear when COVID-19 sent us all home, unsure of what the next year would look like. Now, we gather here tonight, getting ready to graduate from Hood tomorrow, with our future ahead of us. With the uncertainty of what the future holds, what our careers will be like, or what our master's program will contain, it could be easy to be consumed with fear. However, the phrase fear not is said to be one of the most used phrases in the Bible, with it appearing 365 times. In Joshua 1.9, it says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We have been commanded to stand strong, to believe in ourselves, and trust the path that we have been given. No matter where you are headed, be strong and courageous. Use your experiences from Hood and all that we have overcome as a community to propel you in your future endeavors. I leave you with this last scripture from John 14:27. Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Hello, class of 2020. When you began your senior year in the fall of 2019, none of us imagined how you would finish that year virtually and graduation would move to one year later. Class of 2020, we are so proud of you 
And although the message is coming a year later, by no means does it minimize the celebration of all of you and all of your achievements. We are honored to have been chosen by the class of 2020 to celebrate you and all of your collective accomplishments. Among the academic, athletic, service, and career accomplishments in your class, you were also awarded the Medal of Hope by President Chapdelaine. As one of Hood's core values, Hope helped us get through spring 2020. I'm sure many of you thought last spring that of course you'd wanna come back for graduation, but a lot has happened since last May and as we have lived through this pandemic. The future may look unclear or different than what we or our families anticipated, so we still need hope. I wanna just share with you some voices from history that give us hope. Martin Luther King Jr. had a dream a hope that all people would be treated equal in our country. President Barack Obama had the audacity of hope, hoping to not participate in a politics of cynicism, but in politics of hope. Winston Churchill said, all the great things are simple and many can be expressed in a single word, freedom, justice, honor, duty, mercy, and hope. And novelist and poet Barbara Kingsolver state, shares that the very least thing you can do in your life is figure out what you hope for. And the most you can do is live inside that hope. So to the class of 2020, never underestimate the power of your voice to empower others, promote change, and bring hope to our community, our country, and our world. Congratulations. So when I asked Professor Bean from the Department of Law and Criminal Justice, who incidentally was just awarded tenure, Thank you. Thank you. who she'd like to introduce her at the baccalaureate, she said me. I said, what about the student you got a permanent job at the law firm upon graduation? Or what about the student you got a full ride to law school? Or the student who has a conditional offer at the police agency where you are an instructor? She said, no, I want you to do it. So I agreed. You see, I've shared her with students since I was born, and it's my honor to introduce my mom, Professor Teresa Bean. All right, I'm gonna try not to cry, but you guys know I'll drop a tear in a heartbeat. So thank you for that lovely introduction, and might I say she is a lovely young lady. Um, it is an absolute honor to be here today to celebrate, celebrate the classes of 20 and 21. Uh, when I was asked to be the keynote speaker, I asked uh, Lily, what would you like me to talk about? Because, you know, I'm her mom and I can talk about anything and I do all the time. So she said, Mom, you have to give them real world advice for graduates. And I said, you mean like adulting sucks or you're soon going to have your favorite spatula or for the rest of your life you're going to be worried about what you need to cook for dinner. Um, and she said, maybe not that stuff, Mom. But I said, you know, sure, I'll do it. I'm an attorney. I can talk forever. So if you all will pay attention, I think we will be done by 10. Um, I will never forget where I was when I realized the awesome power of professors or of teachers. Uh, students quote us. I remember one of my, I, I remember just being awestruck when I heard one of my students, her name was Alex, um, say, my teacher said, and she was referring to me. And then of course she quoted exactly what I said and it was probably something I didn't ever wanna hear again. Um, but that's when I realized, even though I've always had a, a child that Students listen to their teachers sometimes more than they listen to their parents, and I see some of you all shaking your head. So if my students are gonna be quoting me, I thought to myself, what is it that I want them to hear, and what is it that I want them to repeat? So the following are highlights of wisdom that I've garnered over my years, um, and how I have presented some of this to my students. I broke it down into three topics. Basically, number one, knowing yourself. Number two, personal relationships. And then number three, professor slash mom advice. 
So what I'm about to share with you are kind of theorems with corollaries, but it has nothing to do with math. I'm terrible at math. If I was better at math, I would have gone to med school. Um, they could be maxims. They're kind of quotations. They're nuggets of wisdom. Or you could determine that they're just ramblings from a nutty professor. The choice is yours. But I want to start with knowing yourself. Uh, one of the things that I always say, and I see some of my students sitting out here, is that you need to remember who you are. And who are you? I'm a middle kid. I'm the middle kid in my family. So quite frankly, as a middle child, you see incredible injustice. Are there any middle kids out there? Do you know what I'm talking about? You're not the oldest, and you're not the youngest. So we see, we saw, I saw a lot of injustice in my world. So as a result, I have this keen sense of justice and what's right and what's wrong. Unfortunately, my parents didn't always agree with me. Uh, what do I value? I value truth. I value honesty. I value transparency. Um, I don't like to beat around the bush. I see some of my students out there that know that I'm not Willy Wonka and I don't sugarcoat. Um, but I also value integrity. And what is integrity? Integrity is doing the right thing no matter who's watching. When things are happening to you and they're shaking you at your very core, that's the time you need to stop, regroup, and remember who you are. Stand up for what you believe in and always stand up for the underdog. That's also part of who I am. But when you do that, you need to realize that sometimes you're going to be standing alone, and that's OK. And if you need someone by you, you let me know. Be yourself. I'm passionate. For those of you, those of you that know me, you know, I'm, I'm pretty passionate. I'm, hey, let's, let's, let's quiet it down. Um, I'm not, uh, if that was one of my students, they would get they would get yelled at. Moving on. I'm passionate. Now, way back in the day when I was young, which is a really long time ago, although I realize I'm aging gracefully, um, in the day, passionate children were called bad. OK, we were called bad. Now we call them spirited, right? We're spirited. Oh, your child's spirited. Um, so in any event, but keep in mind who you are and never lose sight of that. For those of you who know me and even took my freshman seminar class, you know that this was one of my favorite quotes. And um, I believe that I gave you a copy of this and we went over it a lot. But someone once told me not to bite off more than I can chew. And I said, I'd rather choke on greatness than nibble on mediocrity. Okay. So what I mean by that is you have to hold yourself to the highest of standards. And that goes with my little corollary of integrity. But I want you to be aware of great expectations. Have them for yourself, but don't expect others to always do the right thing. So I had to learn that um, in my years. And the last part of knowing yourself is the concept of control the controllables. And some of the things that you can control are your attitude, your hard work, your effort, your dedication. No one can take that away from you. Those are the things that you control. And you have to give up the things that you don't. Right? Now, as we're moving on to the relationship of others, one of the things that you'll hear me say a lot is people come into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. So think about that while you're building your tribe of people. I suggest to almost everyone that you really need to find someone that you trust implicitly. It's that person that always tells you the real deal. And for me, when I found that person, I married him, or she became my best friend. My best friend's going to be around sometime tomorrow, and we've been best friends for 27 years. I'm sorry, 37 years, 37 years. Um, and so she will be here tomorrow. And also, one of the other people that I trust implicitly is Lily, although she seems to hate what I wear. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> Your mentors or the people that you trust can be anyone. They can be a colleague. They can be a spouse, a partner, a professor, or even a child. And in my case, some of my students 
are the ones that I truly trust with great advice and to be my mentors as well. I would be remiss if I didn't bring up Dr. Maya Angelou. Dr. Angelou says that when people show you their true colors, you have to believe them. So you'll hear me say that a lot. And that has to go with actions and having consequences. So you teach people how to treat you. And when they show you who they are, you have to believe them. So a lot of times we give people second and third and fourth and fifth and sixth chances. And I get doing that, but at some point, when they're showing you who they are, you just got to believe them. So some of you are saying, and I wanted to bring a, a, a direct relation to President Chapdelaine's uh, address earlier. And I thought, did she see my, well, my notes? Because I didn't see hers. But she brought up some really good points. And she talked about the naysayers. So I'm going to say it the way I would say it, not quite as eloquently. But I know you're sitting there thinking, but Professor Bean, what about the haters? Well, I have a quote for that, too. Coco Chanel said, right, Coco Chanel, I don't care what you think about me. I don't think about you at all. Bam, that needs like a dab or something. But in any event, you know, think about that for just a second. It means a lot of things, but one of the things that I think it means is that people don't think about us nearly as much as we think they are, okay? Also, what it means is what other people think about you is really not your business. You go about your business and remember who you are. Now, I'm going to say also that haters are going to hate, right? We know that. Haters are going to hate, right? We know that. Um, I don't call them haters because when they're checking my Facebook page, yes, I still have Facebook, uh, or they're checking your Instagram or your Finstas. If you all don't know what a Finsta is, I'll tell you later. Um, I don't call them haters, I call them fans, right? So don't dim your light because you simply blind others. What I want to say is simply, haters need sunglasses because I am too bright for them, and you're too bright for them too. Lastly, I want to tell you to find your tribe, okay? Find who you love. I know a lot of you are thinking, I should have taken more Professor Bean's classes. A little late for that, ladies and gentlemen. Moving on. <laughs> Find your tribe. Okay, Who do you love? Who are your friends? Love them and love them deeply and be loyal to your friends. That's who I am. I'm fiercely, fiercely loyal. If you're in my inner circle, you're in forever. You're in for life. There's only one thing you can do to get out of it. I can't tell you now, but there's only one thing. The last part of this is talking about professor mom advice. So many of you come to me for advice, and sometimes I have to say to you, do you want me to speak to you as your professor or as your mom or as a mom? And sometimes my students will say both. So here's a couple little tidbits that I learned along the way. I got this when I was a, I believe, a sophomore in college, and I was in an internship over the summer and I was complaining and lamenting about going to law school and how long it was going to take. And this mentor came from out of the blue. He worked with me and he said, obstacles are what you see when you take your mind off the goal. And that was just so, it was one of those things where I had to go, down, go home and lay down. I was like, that is heavy. Because that's true. Right? When I was looking at how long law school was going to take, I was taking my mind off the goal. And quite frankly, it went very, very quickly. Two more things to discuss, and then we'll start on the main keynote address. Do not equate knowledge with wisdom. If I were to give you the best advice I could is do not equate knowledge with wisdom. And do not equate knowledge and wisdom with age, because I think we all know some older souls who are far younger than us and so much smarter and wiser than we could ever be. I had a student graduate from a very prestigious law school and attempt to take me on, and that was fine. I was, I was okay for that. Clearly, the student was smarter than me. That, I'm not even going to pretend. But the problem was this. The student had knowledge, but the student didn't have wisdom. Okay? And that's the only thing that you can get when you practice law versus study law. 
And so whereas I had tried hundreds of cases and interviewed thousands of witnesses and practiced law, this student had only studied law. So needless to say, I won. Okay, moving on. The last thing I want to talk about are heroes. Heroes. And a lot of my students are my heroes, and there's so many heroes that we have. And earlier today, five Hood students were commissioned into the U.S. Army, um, agreeing to support, I get chills, agreeing to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Um, they are my heroes. And I'm looking at Nikita, and I'm getting all verklempt because she's a law and CJ major as well as a, a psychology major. And I'm so very proud of you, Nikita. And we all will be visiting you in Hawaii. Um, there's plenty of, I'm going for poke bowls on every corner. So, another hero of mine is someone new into my life. He's not really into my life. I saw it on the news. But he's a 19-year-old. His name is Braden Ellis. He attends Cypress College in California. And he recently gave a presentation on can cancel culture and policing. And he was attacked by his professor who thwarted his speech when she kind of got backed into a corner. Another student who had a view different from Braden said, I'm glad you brought that up. Even though we disagree, I respect your opinion. And Braden says, we need to have unity back in our country and learn how to have civil debates again from the left, the right, and the center. And I say, here, here, Braden, I agree. My mom advice about this is a little different. Well, I guess similar, but I suggest that you must inherently mistrust someone who is telling you what to think. It's our jobs as professors to teach you how to think, how to support your thoughts and your opinions with authority. But it's not our job to tell you what to think. We need rational discourse with varying points of view. And somehow, we as a society have brought into the notion I bought into the notion that credibility increases when our volume does. And you know that's not true. We need rational discourse and hearty, respectful debates, and not just with people who agree with us. Not only do we need it, we need to demand it. In closing, I have been known to say while clapping my hands like a famous choreographer, this is not dress rehearsal, people. Right? This is your life. Megan Sunshine's laughing at me, but she's probably heard me say that a couple of times. If you remember nothing else, remember this. You and you alone are responsible for your happiness. So I say to you, class of 2020 and class of 2021, you are on the path exactly where you need to be. If you don't have a job right now, that's okay. You're going to be okay. You're going to find that job or that grad school or that law school or that medical school or, or the army or wherever it is that you choose to be. You're going to be okay. Be yourself, find your tribe, and consider positions that are different from your own. Godspeed on your journeys and congratulations.
I'm Kiara Brown, and I'm Celestia Hill, and we'll be reading the pass we'll be reading Passing the Torch by Ryan Hilt. The humble flame that empowers the chosen survives through the ages. The flame guides them to lead others, to help those lost in the darkness. Those that bear the flame, they are given many responsibilities. The flame draws the confused and lost to give them hope through its representative. Alas, human beings are not immortal. So the time will come that we must relinquish the flame. Many will be saddened by change, but may their eyes remain towards the flame. Its embers still burn in the previous host as it takes residence in the successor. Thou who passed the flame, embrace the new path before you. Thou who receives the flame, take heart the lessons you learned. May the chosen believe in a successor and a successor surpass the chosen's expectations. Thank you. Thank you. At the beginning of every academic year, we gather together, usually over in the Hodson Outdoor Theater, to light candles. Many of you can remember that from your first year, one of your first days here. Those candles are symbols of knowledge that have guided us in our learning at Hood. As generations of graduates who've come before you, tonight you will see candles lit as you prepare to go forth from Hood College to share your light with the world and to entrust your hope to the upcoming senior class. Lily Bean, who's president of the class of 2021, symbolically received the light from Christian Hoke, president of the class of 2020. And tonight, Lily will pass on her light, your light, to Hiba Usmani, who's the president of the class of 2021. And so I want to invite Hiba to come and join us up in front as Lily passes the light. So these are the words from the Buddhist tradition. Thousands of candles can be lit from a single candle, and the life of the candle will not be shortened. Happiness never decreases by being shared. Will you join me in prayer for the light? The book of Genesis starts with these words. In the beginning, the earth was without form and void. And the Holy One said, let there be light. And there was light. And the Holy One saw that light was good. And from that moment, human beings have treasured the power of light for guidance, for comfort, for warmth, for strength, and light. Tonight, we honor the gift of light, not just for physical power, but for the symbol of how it can be spread and how it brings the possibility of new vision, new understanding from age to age. As the flame of a single candle can be ignited for other flames, so the virtues of light from your individual lives can be shared to bring hope, peace, justice, and strength to countless others. May the light we share here tonight and the light that is held in each heart bring blessing and new hope to our world. Amen. Class of 2020 and 2021, I want to invite you to stand. 
And I want to give all of us this blessing as we finish. With the blessing of divine love and wisdom, let us leave tonight to join our hearts, our minds, and our hands to build a better world. So let us go forth in peace to begin the celebration of this commencement weekend. Amen. <laughs>